Hello and welcome to this video how to receive an email with Flowable. I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to show you how you can receive an email with Flowable and use that email within your process. Now to get started, first I already did the setup with the Flowable Docker Compose file and in addition to that I added two containers. One is GreenMail, that is actually our mail server. That mail server is basically providing us SMTP and IMAP. I'm going to use IMAP without SSL. Uh, in practical world, most of the time you would like to use IMAP with SSL. That's basically almost the same for the setup as long as your server has a valid uh, certificate. And in addition to that, we have Roundcube. Roundcube provides us a web interface for our um, email server. Now IMAP is listening on the port 3143 uh, for me. That's not the default port actually. So you might want to check what your port is. Typically for SSL it's 993. So I'm just going for 3143 which we are having over here. Now to get started we actually need to go to global design. In Flowable Design, I already signed in. I also uploaded my license file. So we can directly go ahead and create an app. Receive email app is how I'm going to call my app. And in that app, I can create a process. You could also use a case actually. So that doesn't really matter for this how to. Um, I'm just creating a simple, straightforward process. Uh, you can also receive emails within a case. Now for a process, you typically start with the start event and rather than having a normal start event or none start event, we would like to go for an event registry start that we can simply change with the tools icon here and then pressing on event registry start. Now here I'm going to select an inbound event and there's a default inbound event available. So that is the global system mail event, which we can use and we then can start with the inbound event configuration. Uh, here we see actually all the different fields from our event, as well as the option if we would like to start always a new or only in case there uh, isn't already an existing with the same correlation parameters. The correlation parameters are defined as part of our event, but for now let's just go ahead and add here our uh, payload basically to our process. And we have on the left side, the payload which we are receiving from the event itself. And on the right side, we have then how we would like to map those. I just do a one-to-one -one mapping. So as it is coming through, basically I am creating variable with the same name. And uh, that is basically done for uh, all of those attachments and raw mail bytes, I'm actually marking as transient, which allows me then to uh, not store them in the database. Both of those fields might get large when we have large files. And with that, we rather prefer to not having them uh, stored in the database, just we are going to consume them, then store those as content items and then we don't need to have those raw mail information anymore. Now let's press OK. And with that, we have most of it already done, actually. We only need to create now a new channel to receive the email. And then we can already receive the email. Obviously, we would still need to do something with our content, but um, that is coming next. Now the channel itself and an inbound in channel especially is the way to get an event inside Flowable. And there you always have a source system where it is coming from. You say how basically that uh, event is going to be processed and eventually it then ends up in that event over here. So let's just call that inbound uh, email channel. And that inbound email channel is a uh, channel of the type inbound email event. So we say it's inbound and then the implementation is going to be email. And we need to specify here a few information until we are allowed to or able to receive emails. 
So our IMAP URL starts typically with IMAP or IMAP S in case you're using SSL, followed by the host name. And then we need to go for the port since we have a non-default port and then slash and the name of the folder which we would like to read. Now the next field is here actually the event key and for the event key itself, we can simply just click here on that event and see what we are having in here. Since here you have that small little eye at the top where you see the key. From here we can copy and paste that key and just uh, paste that key over here. Actually, you do not need to use the flowable mail event which comes out of the box. You could also create your own event with the same fields or a subset of those fields. Now the subject correlation pattern is a way to filter for specific emails. So here you can go ahead and uh, basically say which kind of emails you are interested in from a subject. It's a regular expression. So you could start, for example, with dot star to match everything. Then I continue with backslash square brace to say I would like to have at least one square brace. And in that square brace, we would like to have ABC dash and then a, a number. So I just say everything between zero and nine. Therefore, I would like to have at least one. So I enter a plus here. I close the round braces, which gives me the opportunity to basically later on correlate to exactly what I have inside those round braces. So ABC dash and the number. In case you have a case, for example, which um, is with that a, a specific case identifier, you can simply go ahead and uh, use that identifier then in here to match on that. Uh, after that, I would like to have a, a closing uh, square brace, and then I say a wildcard afterwards. Typically, when you do that, you send out emails as well with that same identifier, then the user simply needs to press reply, and it is automatically matched with your subject correlation. We can configure here if messages should be uh, deleted or just marked as red. I will go for marked as red. Now we have a polling rate. So when you are using polling, uh, you can specify an ISO 8601 duration in here, which is for example PT1S for every second, uh, which you would like to use. Then um, we can say we would like to support idle. And with that, the polling rate typically doesn't even apply. We need to provide a username. For green mail, you can actually use whatever you want. And that is also then later on the email address you are sending something to, and you can use a password here as well. Now those two fields are actually can be configured to system properties as well. Therefore you need to um, provide your channel key, which would be inbound email channel in here with some configuration properties uh, in your uh, application properties file or as an environment variable. Uh, last but not least, we have the tenant detection. In case you are using multi-tenancy, then you need to select something different than no tenant ID detection. For us, no tenant ID detection is fine. And we now can uh, basically proceed. A fixed tenant would allow you to just specify the tenant here or extract using a regex group from the email subject would be similar then to our correlation parameter. And then we have uh, the possibility to specify our own custom implementation in here as well. Now we are ready to receive emails. I mean, as soon as we uh, publish everything, uh, there's one thing which I would like to do before we are going for that. And that is actually creating a document. Therefore we have below flowable work here, um, uh, create document task. So that's the one over here, which we can just connect to our inbound email event. And here we can provide the raw mail bytes and it will simply basically store them as a content item for us. So let's just call that email.eml and then as a uh, document MIME type, we can select here email as well, which will automatically fill out message slash RFC. And that is uh, then the actual type. Now I saved it 
And next we are going ahead and publishing it uh, to our global work. And with that, we can go ahead and write an email. I'm already signed in here to the web interface of Roundcube with my email address. And I'm just composing now a new email at system to system at flowable.com. And as a subject, I am going to write abc-1 test email. I all, this is my first test email. And I'm going to attach as well an image. So I have here some beautiful mountains. I press open and then I'm going to press send. Now that email is now sent to Flowable and we are going to see it here below work all. And we see we already received that email. And inside um, the history, we see that it executed our create document task. And when we go to documents, we see here we have actually an email and that email is loading here as a PDF as well. And we see that we have the first email in here, which we just received. Now, um, the attachment isn't exposed to our process yet. However, what we can do when we go to control and go there for process instances and completed instances, since our instance is already done, here we can look at additional variables which we have. So we have also the content, we have the from address, we have information about when we received it and when it was sent and the subject as well as who are the receivers. There are a few fields which are basically null, uh, that CC and BCC, for example, since I just haven't set, uh, set those on my email as well as I uh, composed a plain text email, so content HTML is also not set. Now as a next step, we can process our um, attachments and therefore I can introduce here an exclusive gateway since we only would like to do those in case we have attachments. So has attachments. In case, uh, yes, we are going to do some processing. In case, no, we just go straight through. So here, let's say this is the no part, the default part. Here we say then um, for attachments that equals to null. In this case, we do not have any attachments. And here we say that is going to be uh, our default flow and we are going to call them Yes, and uh, based on that, we can now simply go ahead and uh, use again the create document task to say here we would like to create the attachments. Now, since you have potentially more than one, you can go here for multi-instance sequential or parallel, that is up to you. Uh, you can uh, put in as a collection the attachments. So that is basically the collection which we have specified in here in the received below attachments. So that's the same then this variable over here. Uh, we can then say that our element variable is the attachment itself, loop counter and so on you can leave as it is. And as document content, there is a JSON where we can say here now that's attachment dot bytes as our content. When you store them actually as a variable um, without transient, then you are going to see how that JSON looks like. Uh, I still remember it from the last time. So here I'm having attachment.bynname as my file name and mime type, we can also use attachment.content type in here. Now with that, we also created then attachment items. Let's save that and publish it again. And then we are going to send another email which uh, contains again attachment to system at flowable.com. ABC2, this is my second test. Hello and thank you for watching. And I am going to attach a file and that's the same picture again. And let's send that. Now, uh, what you could actually do as well, you could store the output variable in here and then use that document 
also inside your process to keep that demo simple i just went ahead and uh, basically um, added those here and we see now in our receive email for the second email we have in addition to our email which is there basically as it was before also the image in here which we can directly uh, show or use within our process and with that we already reached the end of our today's uh, demo video thank you very much for watching and see you next time